You're watching a recorded session from PodScamp 2016 in Austin, Texas, sponsored by WP Engine. Welcome to Do More with Flexible Forms. Let me introduce our speaker, Scott Kingsley Clark. This is uh, going to be the last thing of the whole day. Um, we don't really have to have the big gigantic Q&A after this. You guys can just go home and try to make your life make sense again after all of this information. Um, so we'll leave you with this parting bit of knowledge, um, forms. And uh, I know Jim has gone through a bit of stuff, but I figured I would touch the topic a bit. Um, you can do a bunch of stuff with flexible forms. And that means that you can have forms in the front of your site. That means you can have forms in the admin area of your site. And there are some cool stuff that you can do with gravity forms. Now, this is a premium plugin, uh, well known. Lots of developers know it. Lots of pe people use it. Um, what was it? Hundred thousands, hundred thousand, thousands, hundreds of thousands of users. Um, so it's it's a pretty active plugin. Uh, it's highly extensible. Um, I have, myself, the past two years, I've probably written uh, over 100 hooks <laughs> with it um, to customize different parts of it. So it's, it's been a, quite of a, a challenge for me to find an instance where it doesn't exist. But when I do, um, I have a, a special uh, bat phone I call, and the Gravity Forms developers go and add that code uh, verbatim. I <laughs> tell them what line and what it needs to be, and they do it. So if there's anything that's missing here and you find a problem, if, it's, if you need a filter or a hook, they will add it. Uh, but more than likely, you're not going to run into a case where you can't do it because it, the hook will already be there. Um, it has great documentation um, on the site. They have hook documentation for, I, I don't know if it's every single hook, but I'm pretty sure it was. Um, they also have great support. It's priority support if you have a developer account and regular support if you have um, some of the lower plans. Um, some cool things you can do with it is multi-page forms. Uh, obviously, I don't have a really cool presentation here like Jim usually puts together with all these screenshots, but um, if you check out the graduateforms.com site, they'll show you some more features. Uh, multi-page forms might, for instance, be where you have a user fill out their profile. So maybe the first page is, what's your information? What's your email and password or whatever? Second page might be, what's your name? Or what's your address? Third page might be, what are your interests? Are you into puppy dogs and cats? Or are you into Pokemon? And then they submit the form, and then it goes and saves it out to the database. So in each step of those forms, you can do validation. There's lots of hooks and stuff available. And that is pretty great because you don't have to worry about trying to make all this happen inside of the pod small box because we, we allow you to do a bunch of things, but really this thing is fleshed out um, all the way. So it, it's really nice to be able to leverage this on my projects where I don't have to worry about trying to add a bunch of stuff myself. Um, it also is, I think it's important to separate the forms from your um, pods installation because that gives you so many so much access to someone who may be building a, a site for you. So let's say you want to find a Gravity Forms developer, someone who's familiar with Gravity Forms who can build you a cool form that does this and this and this. You can find that, but then you can take that form that they built you and then send that data into pods on your own. You don't have to worry about much work there. So you can sort of split up, divvy up the, uh, the uh, chain of command there in terms of who's going to do what and who's going to be in charge of what. There's also the ability to limit submissions. So Let's say you have a limited um, number of things you're going to provide. So let's say uh, first 10 users are able to sign up. Uh, everyone else has to join a wait list. So the first 10 users will be able to sign up. And if they try to sign up, they'll say, sorry, you need to join the wait list. Just a little text. They click that to go to a different form. But that form is locked down. There's no way to submit that form. Gravity Forms is locked down. It says, no, I have 10 submissions. Not letting anyone in. No new pod entries are going to get created. It's great to have that nice wall in between there. Uh, you can also schedule forms. So, like, say you, my my dad's not here now, but um, he runs a site called TexasStarParty.org, and it's for um, a bunch of star geeks to get together and look up in the in the sky and look at stars and planets. Um, obviously, it's more cooler than that. But uh, what they have is registration for every year they run a star party, 
and that registration form has to only be available from a certain period of time to a certain period of time so they can run their extensive workflow, which divvies up who gets access to it because they end up finding a lot of people who want to come to it and stay on site. They don't have that much room, so there's a whole process there. Um, and then payment forms, like I said, uh, you can add a bunch of add-ons for, for Gravity Forms, which do things like um, payments, signature, um, lots of different other options that integrate with Zapier, which integrates with even more. So you connect your Zapier to your Gravity Form, and you can send it to Salesforce. Salesforce. You can send it to uh, Drupal site, or you can send it to all these different other areas. Um, and of course, they have lots of other third-party free and paid plugins available. There's also some other ones like Caldera Forms, which is from Josh Pollock, and uh, he was uh, contributing to Pods uh, as of recently, and um, he has a Pod-specific plugin for Pod or for Caldera Forms, and uh, um, it works sort of similar to the way that the Pods Gravity Forms add-on works that I'll show you here in a minute. Also, Ninja Forms is pretty cool, and W Forms is new, um, obviously from Syed from. The people who make OptiMonster, same sort of group of people. Is it under Awesome Motive? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So WP Forms is paid. Um, there's not a free version, right? There's a light version. There's a light version. All right. Cool. So yeah, it's it's uh, user experience oriented, like he was saying, and uh, there is some cool stuff there because you can create different types of forms with these without having to go through the thought process of, well, I need all these fields, I need all these fields. You get sort of the common uh, set of fields all added for you. Um, and then, of course, we have our pods forms. Like I said, I alluded to, we do have our own forms um, processor inside of pods itself. There's the code right there uh, to output different ways of outputting that form. However, we have a short code. It's in the pods short code area. You just click pod short code, and you can choose that. I don't know if, uh, Jim, did you go through the form at all? Yeah, so, I the form at all because I knew it would be a little bit. Yeah, so there's a widget for the form. There's a short code for the form. It's just like the templates output kind of stuff. It's just right next to that under the short codes and widgets. Um, and it lets you add just a quick public form to let people submit content. Um, it's not as customizable, but you can customize which fields show, and you can customize how certain fields display at the code level. Um, but it's, it's no Gravity Forms, there's no WP Forms. It's not um, going to give you the ability to do conditional logic. So maybe you say, um, are you are you into Pokemon? Check that box, and then all of a sudden you get all these questions about Pokemon that say, well, what's your favorite color of Pokemon? Well, what's your favorite Pokestop? Or whatever it might be. Um, and then if there was a checkbox below that said, are you into Harry Potter? Uh, what's your favorite movie? You know, what's your favorite book? Or what is sacrilege to you in terms of Hulkruxes? Um, all sorts of things you can add there, and, and the conditional logic can get quite complex based on a number of things, a number of requests from a client. I can tell you right now, I've built a ginormous, and I actually showed that to DPD, um, I sh built a ginormous form, I didn't, I didn't show you the actual form, but uh, it's a huge form with eight steps to it, and it has a bunch of conditional logic based off of what they enter on one step that all changes everything in the step eight, or step seven, even certain steps disappear depending on what you enter. So there's some really cool stuff you can do with a plugin like Gravity Forms or W Forms, um, that you really can't do with pods, which is great because honestly, if we spend all our time trying to duplicate what they're doing, we're not giving you the really the best experience. The best experience is brought by integration, I feel like. And time for a demo. So we have our old uh, Elastic Press site here. We created the reviews pod earlier, and we had that one field for. Uh, topic and now we want to how do we get people to submit these reviews on the site so let's go ahead and install this cool plugin over here gravity forms as you see here there's some cool other add-ons that they have available polls is cool quiz survey is actually what you got in mail in your emails um, uh, to fill out what's your skill level what what um, T-shirt size, if we had T-shirts, would you want? And uh, that's it's a pretty cool thing. And what we actually see on our side is the list of um, how many people ordered large shirts. And, and we can get those sort of high-level summaries right then and there from a survey <laughs> field type. And let's go down to Gravity Forms. Ignore this 2.7 thing. That's for later. 
activate. So over here on the form side, was uh, do you get that cloud strategy form? It is free. Um, they were going to list it on their site, but uh, it was important to me that it was available for free. Um, I didn't want it to be behind the developer license. I didn't want it to be um, solely in, co in control of them because I wanted to make sure that we could add features as quickly as we wanted to, add fixes. And um, But they they support us, though. They are um, one of our uh, gold, is that right? Yeah, they're one of our gold. gold sponsors for Friends of Pods. So they help us keep it alive and keep it going. Um, Yep. Yep. So let's go ahead and create a new form. Let's call review or submit review. Easy peasy. Of course, um, does uh, WP Forms have a review form type? <laughs> Might be easier there. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to add a field here, and we're going to say review title. And I'm going to I'll just make it required. And I'm going to add a paragraph text field for review content. I'm going to make that required because we don't want anyone to submit reviews who don't have any content. And then let's go ahead and select a new field here. Um, we're going to call this one the topic. And again, like I showed earlier, we only created a single line text because we're just keeping it simple for the, the purposes of the demo, but you have access to create different types of fields. And those things can... <coughs> come into play over here in a second while I'll show you the feeds. So we got all of this, and I'm going to bump my size down a little bit and update. So I've got my form created. i got my fields here, and now I want to set up a pods feed. Now this is, this is part of the add-on that we added, and what it does is it lets you create um, feeds depending on certain use cases. So in this case, we are going to add a feed, so it's going to be for um, submitting review from site. It can be named whatever you'd like. It's, it's never used anywhere else but to, to display this feed. And uh, we're going to go ahead and select this reviews pod. As you see here, this can be any kind, kind of pod that you have. Um, so it could be a user pod, it could be a post type pod, could be a taxonomy pod, could be a comment type pod, could be a uh, custom uh, advanced content type pod um, could be, technically we actually support the ability to create new custom tables that aren't advanced content types that we don't even touch. So this could go into a, uh, a special non-related um, table for Salesforce plugin if there's a Salesforce plugin somewhere. Um, so we have a review and now we've got our pod fields. Now in terms of Mapping, we do some. We try to do some smart things. If your field's named the same, we're going to try to map it for you automatically. So we have a topic field, and here's our pod name, pod field name, and here's our form field from Gravity Forms. Uh, and then we have our review title. So let's go ahead and do that. Review title. Uh, let's go ahead and do the review content. And let's go ahead and do date. And I can also, um, if I choose, when I create my entries for Gravity Forms, normally if I just create them, they'll still stay around. So they'll be their own separate entries, but my reviews will be in their own post type. I can choose to delete these entries after the submission happens successfully. This sort of removes any extra data, but you can keep them there historically to say what do they ever submit at the start of this and be able to debug some more information. You can also enable Markdown if you have a custom HTML field inside of Gravity Forms. This is a nice little handy place to add that there. Click Update, and we can do Preview. So I got a custom review content here. Cool stuff. Bruh. Submit, and so this would then submit into your reviews area over here, and that would be right here. And what do you know? There it is. So we have our custom review, and um, anywhere you would like to display this form, there's a short code. You can just display it right away. So like, let's go into a page. And of course, they have a short code form here. I'm going to select this submit review form. I don't usually display the form titles or descriptions from 
Gravity Forms and click Publish. So as easy as that, I just built a review form on my site that submits two pods. And that was, I guess now it was 20 minutes, but I was talking through the whole thing, of course. Um, yep. Yep. And Gravity Forms itself does have the ability to, uh, let me go back into this. It has the ability to do mapping from a form into a uh, post type already. So as you see over here, I didn't show this to you, but it's a uh, post fields, and you can put a post title here and a post body here. You can customize the, the labels, and you can choose what uh, default status you want it to be. Which author you want it to be, whoever's logged in. Different post statuses, different categories, all those sorts of things, and this would be separate from the pods feed. So you may not even need to have the pods feed if you're just submitting to a regular post type. Um, but you don't see the post type here as an option. So that would be one place, instead of using this, you would then just use the pods feed for your custom post types. Uh, they also have the ability to, you have an add-on here for users, where you can have a user registration add-on. Actually, look at all these. There's a bunch, lots of payment ones, lots of CRMs. Mailing lists, coupons, Dropbox, FreshBooks, a bunch. Let's see. So we're going to go down to user registration. So you can use this to add a, a registration form for your site, as well as an edit profile form. So if the user is logged in, it'll edit their information. You used any of those before besides? Like uh, I've used user registration. I've used um, Zapier, user registration, surveys, Stripe, Slack, polls, quiz, signature, payments pro, pay, regular PayPal, partial entries, MailChimp. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, these these are behind the developers, or what was I don't know which license it had specifically. Yep, so here's, here, here's where the price point is. And it shows you which are available at which levels. So you've got some of your basic add-ons over here. You've got your advanced ones over here on the developer's track and pay, payment stuff too. And that is $199 a year. Um, and they're, they're cool people. Um, but I encourage you to check out all your options because if you're not happy with it and if you don't feel confident with it, then you can't really sell it to a client or someone, or even yourself. So um, try them out. What's that? I just have a question here. Sure, yeah. I've already built a gravity form to sell these coupons. Mm -hmm. Do I it just take some of the PayPal? The yeah, you can have that option to do the PayPal or through the API. Do I need the pod speed to make that all happen? No. To create a coupon? Code? Oh, to create, if, if you want to create the coupon from the, so you want to, you want to have a form that they fill out that they can add their own coupon, but they have to pay you to add it. Yes, the title would be the yeah. offer, and then the body would be yeah, you do exactly like we just did here with the pods feed. Um, yeah, and then it would go into draft status, so it wouldn't be immediately available. You can do that review and um, confirm that you get your payment, and then once you say yes, this has no spammy effect here or offensive language. <laughs> we don't really want a strip club to give us a coupon um, on our site that's supposed to be family friendly. Um, so that is definitely a concern. <laughs> so. Definitely always review first, unless you're dealing with a bunch of content, then you want to hand, have a staff to review. <laughs> um, anyone have any questions about forms in general? Yep. So there's really not many issues because, well, you have to make sure your site's secure. That's the number one. But um, make sure your site also has a um, SSL certificate on it. Uh, WP Engine has uh, free, um, what are the, one, Less encrypt certificates, which are great. You also have the ones that are more um, expensive, like $100, $200 a year, even more for some different val extended validation, which gives a little bit more consumer confidence, but not many people are even really really sure what they're looking at when they see that the site is secure. They don't know the difference. Um, but I think that using a PayPal API or a Stripe API or um, authorized.net API those sorts of things 
aren't a, a super big concern because they don't store the credit card information on your site. What they do is you submit the form and you send it directly to them to their API and they return a transaction ID and uh, the status. So yes, this, was, this payment was successful um, and here's the transaction ID and it saved it to the entry so that you can then track that and say, yes, I see your transaction is here. I can look it up in the Stripe manager or in the PayPal manager area. Um, I really would say there's no concern with online payments beyond the fact that your site is it has to be secure itself. <laughs> you have to secure always keep on top of yourself. Or uh, both. So you want to make sure your site is, yeah, you need HTTPS if you're ever going to have payment forms. Um, even if it's embedded payment form, you really ought to have it. Um, and then you also want to make sure your site is secure and protected. So um, purchase uh, security checkings, um, uh, hacking pre prevention, stuff like that. Like the Jetpack has protect and uh, other things, some new plans that they have as well. They're security. Um, that's S. Yeah. So it's like security, but with a U instead of the E. Oh, that's wrong. Well, that's that's a problem. Yeah. Oh, dot net. Oh. So yeah. So um, they offer protection. They offer fixing issues if your site gets hacked. They offer proactive checking that your site is not hacked. Um, there's also a number of plugins that can offer some things. They, most of those offer additional firewall protection to help protect your site as a whole. Um, it would be important to make sure if you're going to offer payments on your website that you do keep it in check because if you offer payments on your website and someone hijacks your form, your gratitude form, that would be bad because <laughs> then you may not even know that they hacked it. They may not have left a single trace other than a file or a function just added to an existing file somewhere that adds a hook to gratitude forms that takes your submission form and saves it. But Good. I would say that Stripe does it really nicely where they actually hash it. I don't think it actually goes into the um, PHP when you get it submitted. So it is JavaScript hashing and you enter the credit card information. I mean, the problem doesn't go away for um, big companies with resources. I mean, Target, uh, Sony, uh, <laughs> so many sites are getting hacked. And it's not necessarily because of they forgot to, um, to make sure their site was secure. It could be, oh, their email server is just outdated and it had a hack on it. Or it, there's so many things that you're out of, it, that, that's out of your control uh, from running your site. So you want to make sure your host is on top of their updates as well. Um, want to make sure you have backups. Want to make sure that you have retroactive checking, proactive checking. Um, just in general, be aware of what's happening with your website and your code. It's easy to take it for granted. You click, I add it on there, and it's done. And it's, oh, that was easy. I guess I don't have to worry about it now. <laughs> I'll never touch the site for two years and I'll be fine, right? <laughs> it's kind of handled in the case of PayPal, but PayPal is terrible. Everyone, I don't know anyone who loves PayPal. Like they love working with them, but it, they, at least they have their own checkout, which can be, you don't have to worry about that. But then again, they have their own problems that could be terrible yeah. down the road. <laughs> yes, the normal PayPal add-on and the Payments Pro lets you have it on your site. Yeah, well, it's not, it's not embedded. It's just the form is on your site, and it sends the credit card information to their server. So your site would have damage. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And, and even then, someone gets access to your server and says, reroute all these PayPal API requests to my server first. It could still send it to PayPal's and then tell PayPal um, to get the PayPal response back and send it back. So it, it could be a man-in-the-middle attack. So, like, you, you really know nothing of of the problems you have, you're going to be exposing yourself to when you do payments online uh, until you have the problem. But you can <laughs> at least try to be on top of your website, make sure you're picking the right hosting company, make sure you're, um, you're keeping your site updated with WordPress, making sure you keep your plugins updated and tested. Um, I mean, if you don't update and test your site on a monthly basis for a, a secure site, you're going to run into some problems. I was, yeah, I worked on with a more than one client who had credit card information in the database that wasn't hashed, and that was exciting. <laughs> it was like, wow, this is the wild west here. I didn't realize this existed still, but um, they don't realize that, that there's a problem or that that's wrong. 
Um, I even worked on a site as recent as um, 2010 that um, had they had their own system for the management of their content, and all their lo logins had the password saved in the database unhashed as well. And their excuse was, well, how do I tell the, the customer what their password is? Um, so it's, <laughs> yeah. So there's things like that. It's educational problem. It's not just you also that needs to manage it. It needs to be the people you involve to help you manage it. Um, your staff should notify you if they see an update. If you miss it, I mean, someone should be on top of it. It should be everyone. Um, it's, a, it's a group effort, I think. I mean, especially if you've got millions of dollars on the line, if you're selling a big product. Um, it's no laughing matter. Well, I just laughed. Thank you for watching this recording from Pods Camp 2016 in Austin, Texas. As always, you can get help with pods on our website at httppods.io slash forums. You can also get help on our Slack chat at pods.io slash chat. We're inside the hashtag support channel Monday through Friday, Mondays and Fridays all day, and Tuesday through Thursday, the first hour of each day. You can also get help on our wordpress.org support forum at wordpress.org support plugin pods.